Welcome to the CBIA BizCast. I'm your host, Allie Warshavsky. And today on our podcast, we have once mayor of Danbury, now commissioner of the Department of Revenue, Mark Boughton. He is here to break down a new tax amnesty program. Welcome to the podcast, Mark. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you here too, especially to talk about something that could help so many businesses in our state. Uh, There is a new program you just launched uh, that can help businesses struggling with back taxes. Tell us about um, how it started off and exactly who qualifies. Well, basically we have a pretty uh, large uh, accounts receivable here um, and we're trying to get that cleaned up. The last amnesty we did was in 2017. So we had some discussions, the governor and I did, about how do we best go out and and collect those dollars that are out there. And we came up with the idea of an amnesty program. Our amnesty program is called Get Right CT. We want you to get right with with Connecticut. We know that this has been a difficult time as it relates to COVID and uh, all of the different uh, things and impacts it has had on, on the workplace and unemployment. So um, we're gonna offer you a 75% reduction in any interest that you, on any debt you may owe us and waive all penalties uh, only till uh, January 31st. So uh, we think we can uh, get a significant amount of this aging cleaned up or, or, and get people into the system, embedded into the system and get them used to paying taxes again. And the program has officially started, correct? Or, or are we a few days away from when people can apply? That's right. We already started. First week, we did almost a half a million dollars in outstanding money. In fact, I just settled the case uh, about two days ago for one point two million. So um, good stuff going on. And um, we're going to keep uh, moving forward. Our aging people always ask me, well, how much money is really out there? It's about five to eight hundred million dollars uh, going back all the way to the mid 1970s. Now, I don't think a lot of that's collectible, but there's a lot of more recent that uh, recent disputes, you may be an audit, maybe you're in our appellate division, which is our appeal process. Maybe you're uh, out there trying to um, get something cleaned up, or maybe you never paid it off. This is an opportunity to do that and get right with the state. And so just to um, clarify, it doesn't have to be back taxes from this year. It can be from years prior. That's right. We're giving you a window to come in and clean anything up that you owe us. Um, And uh, we think by doing that, we'll get you back into the system and used to paying. And then we all win, all the taxpayers in the state win. And I was gonna ask you, but you kind of already answered this. Is this something the state does often? You said the last time you did it was in 2017. How did it go then? Did you see a lot of people coming forward, applying for this program and it was so successful that you decided to do it again? We uh, had a significant revenue lift in 2017. We're expecting about $50 million, although I think we'll get more on this one. Um, so it works, right? But if you do it all the time and people just wait for the next amnesty, they don't pay their taxes. So we're, you're not going to see another one uh, probably in our lifetime, maybe yours, not mine. Um, but we're also going to um, uh, implement a new analytics uh, process post amnesty that help us use uh, artificial intelligence algorithms. Uh, we're, I'm creating a whole new division here at DRS that will allow us to go after those people that never pay or don't pay their fair share or their full obligation. So we're, we're going to get you. So this is the best time to come in and, and just get right and get it over with um, because we're going to find you over the next couple of years using all these new tools that are at our disposal. And, uh, I, you know, obviously there's years before the pandemic where people were struggling and still owed taxes. But was this brought on, this decision uh, brought on this year because businesses are struggling due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, we do see our um, aging, you know, our accounts receivable growing, right? So that means that less and less people are paying. There's a lot of reasons for that. COVID is obviously one of them, but also um, there's the, it's very difficult in Connecticut in many ways to pay taxes there's a, if you own a business. Um, there's a lot of paperwork to be filed. Some people may be dual language or, or English may not be their first language. So trying to figure out all this paperwork, uh, they just don't have time if they're running a small restaurant or maybe a, a small variety store, convenience store, that kind of thing. So we're going to look to streamline a lot of those documents over the next year. So it's much simpler. I'm actually going to be purchasing two vans That'll be at uh, festivals, fairs, things like that, where you can walk up, we can look you up. We'll be able to say, okay, you owe us 50 bucks and 
you know, I, people laugh about the $50, but over a 15 year or 20 year period, that thing can grow to like 1500 or $2,000. So um, pay now, get it over with, let's get all this stuff cleaned up. Uh, I think there's a lot of factors why people don't pay, but that number is growing. And uh, again, that's why we're implementing all different set of standards. One of some of the stuff I'm, I'm frankly uh, uh, copying the IRS. Uh, we're looking at other states. We're comparing data with other states. We're, and we're using data mining here in DRS to, to let us know who owes, what they owe, and how we can reach them. Do you know how we do compare to other states when it comes to businesses owing taxes? Are we, are we uh, in line with the other states and, and people owing, or you know, do we have a few more here that owe? Well, I would say we're probably close to being in line. Um, sales and use tax is by far the largest tax that people uh, don't pay their full obligation in. Um, it's just too easy. Uh, you know, it operates on the honor system. It's just too easy to, to, I want to use the right term here, but to not pay what you owe. Um, and so uh, we are, we look at those things closely, but what's different now than in the past is we're going to start comparing our data uh, in real time to what's happening in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New York State, because we're all working together on the same page and we're all sharing information. And that's also across 30 other states, so not just New England. And I'll be able to know and have some uh, forecasting ability to know that, hey, in about two years, expect people to slow down on paying uh, their income tax or expect uh, problems with uh, a fuel surcharge tax that we have because people are driving electric cars. So these are the things that um, by can working with other states, we don't, we don't share your name, but we certainly do share uh, data that we've gleaned from your filings to know where that money is so that we spend our time on the biggest amount of return. Too often at this agency, we spend too much time on the $500 bill when I've got a $5 million bill sitting over here that uh, would give us a much greater return. And that's what we're going to focus on. And you talked about bringing the vans to festivals and making it, you know, that people weren't even paying their taxes because it was too hard, too many steps. So how are you making this program easy? You know, where do people log on? How can they apply? That's a great point. So we are going to, um, while we're not doing a, a podcast, we're going to be launching a Facebook live uh, show similar to what I did when I was mayor. That'll be once a week. And uh, we'll have people from CBIA on. We're going to have people from uh, legislators, we're going to have uh, the governor, and then we're going to kind of go out in the community and talk to business people. Um, so part of this is uh, is outreach. Uh, we're hiring a, lo a lot more dual language people, uh, a lot of people who speak Spanish or Portuguese that can um, translate documents quicker and explain how to do that. That's critical. We, we find there's a critical need for that out there in the community. But right now, if you're faced with a debt or in dispute with the state, you can go to getrightct.com. That's getrightct.com. You get on there, my mug is right on there, click on and, and get filed on that paperwork and, and we'll get you in the system. Honesty program and everything you just said about making things easier. Uh, the My Connect program, and for anyone who doesn't know, it's an online portal to file tax returns, make payments, and view your filing history. It's part of a multi-year, multi-phase information technology modernization initiative. What are the next steps for My Connect? Yeah, so we've been rolling that out in three phases. We've already done phase one and phase two was done in September. The last phase, this will be the biggest headache, is personal income tax starting next September. And we're going to gently begin nudging people towards the online portal versus uh, filing paper returns. In fact, this year, if you notice, we didn't mail out. Usually we mail out the form and people get in the mailbox and they fill the form out and then they mail it back. We didn't do that this year. We, we did put them in some strategic places around the state, libraries, things like that. But in general, uh, we're going to get away from paper. We need everybody up in the cloud. Um, that's going to require us to do a little educating. That's why we're doing this uh, outreach with, with our, our mobile uh, tax payment centers. So we can sit there and you know help you click the, click the buttons and, and get yourself uh, engaged in the process of using the online portal. Eventually, you'll have a profile that'll be there and you'll have, you know, the big picture, the long term, is that you'll you'll link in for all of your state stuff there. Everything from your driver's license to uh, your taxes to uh, parks passes and everything will be right there uh, on your profile, and you'll be able to change that, amend that as 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 you go on with life, or if you move out of the state or move into the state. So that's really where the the, the long term vision is. But right now, we just got to get people used to using that uh, online portal. In fact, twenty percent of our paid preparers still use paper. 
So those are people that actually do taxes for a living. They're still using paper. Um, we are now linking into TurboTax and to a lot of the systems that they use so that the uh, return is filed automatically with us and doesn't have to go through the U.S. mail. We love the U.S. mail, don't get me wrong, but it's really inefficient and it eats up a lot of staff time separating all these documents and putting them in the right file, et cetera. So uh, say five years from now, where do you hope to be with it? Five years, we'll have completed our rollout and we'll, you know, our course system has been completed. It's, it's a lot of techie stuff, but you know, that, that process never really ends. It, 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 there's always updates and upgrades that come out from the vendor that you always have to implement, but we need to be in the cloud within five years. And then, um, you know, it's more of a more global discussion, but we need to really work on our tax policy. That's one of the directives from the governor is he wants a robust tax policy for the future. That doesn't mean more taxes. What it means though, is we know where we're going. Too often, the, you know, the state lurches from crisis to crisis, trying to figure out how to raise more revenue. We always seem to be behind the eight ball. So we really need to start having our global discussions about what is five years of like 10 years, 15 and 20, and then make those decisions. And uh, the governor believes we don't need more taxes. We need more taxpayers. I couldn't agree with him. Uh, more. And um, that's what we're aiming to create, an easier tax system that's easy to pay, easy to understand. We'll create more taxpayers and then we don't have to raise taxes. Well, speaking of of taxes and the taxpayers, what are some tax credits in your mind that are simply not showing a return of investment? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And we're, we actually are doing an analysis of that right now. There, there are taxes um, out there that we spend a ridiculous amount of time collecting with very little rate of return. I'll give you one that's a little complicated, but not really when you think about it. So if you rent a piece of equipment for construction or something like that, and that rental is below 365 days for less than a year, you have to pay a tax on it. There are only 35 companies slash people in the state of Connecticut that pay that tax. It generates about $300,000 a year. What are we doing? Let's get rid of it. It's a pain in the neck. Uh, and, and frankly, uh, um, it doesn't really give us a rate of return. It costs us more to process the return than to um, actually charge it. I, I think we can do stuff with the property tax credit. Uh, the governor and I have spoken about that. We're working on something now that you'll hear about later on. And I think there's opportunities um, in some of the fees that people pay. You know, we, I think we have to start asking ourselves, we have over 800 fees uh, that you pay to be everything from a nurse to a nail technician to a hairstylist. Do we really need want to be doing that? Do we need to be doing that? Is there a rate of return that makes sense there? Um, maybe we ought to think about suspending those fees, particularly around after COVID, uh, so people can get back up on their feet financially. Um, and those are, I think, are some of the global discussions that you'll be hearing coming out of the governor's office. Which leads into, you know, you're talking about these fees on workers that they're really having a hard time finding right now. Are you guys having the same trouble as the private sector finding workers? We got jobs. So if you're looking for a job and you've got an accountant uh, background and, and um, you know, uh, a bachelor's degree or a bachelor's degree plus 15 credit hours in accounting, go to our website right now at, at drs.gov. We'll be able to uh, uh, get you into the queue, into the system and, and begin the hiring process. These are great jobs, um, you know, great benefits. Uh, the pay, uh, our entry level accountant position, we call them an ACT accountant training, pays about 55, 60,000 to start. After a year and a half, it goes up to 75,000. But remember, you're getting a, a great state benefit package uh, as well that goes along with that and a lot of room for upward mobility. We have a retirement cliff that you've heard about, I'm sure, that, that we're all facing. And we're losing people. I, I get notices uh, almost every day now that somebody's opted to take retirement, whether it be you know, next month or, or, or January 1, they're just giving us a heads up for succession planning. So there is a lot of opportunity uh, at DRS and with the state in general, but um, people like our agency, they stay here forever. So if you're out there looking for a job, that should tell you that's probably the place to work in the state. They don't leave. Um, most of my employees are 25 to 35 year veterans. Um, so there's a reason for that. It's a good place to work. Um, yeah, it's taxes. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. Um, I try to make it exciting and fun, but, you know, it's the wacky stuff that I do. But in general, um, it's a great opportunity if, you, if you're a young person out there that, that has a background in finance or accounting. Um, we also have other, you know, we have customer service rep positions. I even have in my office a, uh, um, 
uh, I'm looking for, for a social media person, um, you know, so we are definitely high in hiring mode and uh, get your resume together and go, go, to, go to our portal and, and sign up. And my last question for you, you know, you think, especially I feel like with the older population, just seeing it in my family, um, you think you've paid all your taxes, then you get a phone call or a letter in the mail. What types of scams has the department been warning taxpayers about? Yeah, we will never call you. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard. Look, um, last year, I got a call from Ever, I thought was Eversource. They said I owed like a, an oddball number that happened to match up exactly what I owed for electric. It was like $227. I have no idea how they got it. And before I knew it, they had me going to my car to get in the car, to go to the CVS, to get a bank card, to then call them. And as I'm going to my car, I go, well, wait a minute, this, this, this can't be real. This has gotta be a scam. That's how convincing these people are. They have my name, my account number, and the exact amount that I owe. So um, if I can, as Commissioner DRS, get halfway uh, to get scammed, I can only imagine what goes on with our seniors that may be a little bit of vulnerable to these kinds of things. So we'll never call you. The IRS does not call you. Uh, you'll know if, if you owe us, we'll, we'll send you certified registered letters. Um, we'll, we'll reach out that way. We do, we do have an email system as well, but um, you can certainly verify that and check that before you pay anything to anybody. Um, and uh, always ask if you can call right back if you get, uh, um, if, if you do get, you know, if you feel you're being scammed. And it, it's, it's sad and it's a lucrative business for those out there that are taking advantage of others. So let's not let them do that anymore and, and make sure even if you do get that call, you know, call Eversource, call uh, uh, Xfinity, uh, call uh, us here at DRS or the IRS, let them know that you got a call and then call your local police department. Uh, you know, I know when I was mayor of Danbury, we would track down these things all the time. We actually caught a little bit ring of people that are operating in the greater Danbury area. So it's real and it's out there and just be really careful. We'll never call you and neither will the IRS. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And hopefully some businesses will walk away um, from this logging on to the website you mentioned and figuring out uh, how to get into a better financial future. So thank you for having us. And thank you for listening to the CBIA BizCast. We have more episodes that you can listen to on Apple, YouTube, SoundCloud, and as well as CBIA.com.